Hi lovely people, welcome once again to Akusia's vlog. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you're done. Today we are going to prepare jollof rice. Jollof rice is a popular dish of Ghanaians and everybody loves it so so much. To begin with, I would have to show you the ingredients I'll be using today. I have my oil, I have my corned beef, my tin fish, I have here my blended pepper, cloves, thyme, cumin, black pepper, aniseed, wediaba. I don't know the English name for that, but then um, I blend it all together and then I have it in the paste form. I also have my garlic, onion, ginger blended together. I have my tomato paste. I have my chicken broth. If you don't know what chicken broth is, is the water that um, comes out after you're done cooking your chicken. Um, I also have here my fried goat meat. I have here my spaghetti. I would love to add um, some colors to my food, so I always buy colorful spaghetti when I'm cooking. And then I have here my vegetables. I have some mixed peppers, some sweet corn, onions, green beans or spring beans. I also have my carrot. This is optional, so you can use any vegetable of your choice. I have my bay leaves and then my stock cube as well. This is curry powder. I will be adding some soy sauce, my salt, and then my stock powder too. I have um, nutmeg in powdered form too as well. So come with me as I show you how to prepare jollof rice today. To begin with, I would be adding my oil to my saucepan. I already have some of the oil used in frying my meat, so I added that one as well. You don't have to throw that oil away anytime you cook it. So I'll let this one heat up before adding the next ingredient. I then add in my blended onion, garlic, and ginger paste too. If you don't want it in a paste form, you can always chop your onions and then add it to your oil right away and stir it till it's golden brown before adding your peppers. When it's golden brown, you add in your mixed peppers. You stir everything together and allow it to simmer for five to 10 minutes. When my jollof, I always get time for it because I want the tastiest jollof. And then some people normally cook their stews in a hurry and then um, when they put the jollof down, it starts bringing out water in the rice, which is very bad. So when cooking jollof, always make sure you have time for the food. Keep on checking on your pepper to see whether it's cooked or not. But then I would advise that when you come in to check on your pepper, you always lower your stove so that it doesn't splatter on you. Now it is cooked, so I would add in my tomato paste. Once I'm done, I will add the chicken broth. If you don't have this one, add water. But then I am not going to add water because the broth contains water. And then I will stir everything together until it's well mixed. Or the base of your saucepan will be bent and then we don't want that in our stew. 
it will make it very bitter so once my tomato is cooked i would start by adding my tin fish or my proteins i have lowered the heat because at this stage it will keep on splattering and then i'm trying to avoid any kitchen acid i would add this and stir a little and then add in my corned beef after adding in the corned beef i will mash it and then stir the stew for a while all this while to my um, stove is on a medium heat so that I don't get any mess in my kitchen. I would add in my seasoning powder, my stock cube, always use natural spices in your food and using all these um, artificial spices. After putting in the stock cube to i would add in my bay leaf i've already washed the bay leaf so this is how bay leaves looks like i would add that one in as well and then add my nutmeg about a teaspoon nutmeg i would add in my curry powder about a teaspoon of it as well I have some powdered cumin spice too, so I would add a little to it. All these natural spices are also good for our health and then it also regulates our sugar too. All this while I've not added any salt in my stew yet because um, the spices contain salt my chicken broth also contains salt so i would want to wait till everything is well cooked before tasting for salt i would add my green pepper or my bell pepper for flavor a little one because i'll be adding some to my jollof rice as well and then you continue stirring till it's mixed you increase the fire and then cover your stew every one to two minutes you have to come back and check on it if you are using a non-stick saucepan you are good to go because you wouldn't have any bent um, stew under your saucepan but then if you are using a stainless steel or any saucepan that is a non-stick you would have to um, be checking up on your stew from time to time. When your stew uh, is burnt, it will make it bitter, and then we wouldn't want any bitter jollof rice as well. So, finally, I will check on my stew for the last time. I was doing a bulk stew for other purposes as well, so I divided my stew into two, and this is what I'm using for my jollof rice. So I would wash my rice and then put it inside the steam. After adding in all the rice, I would then stir everything together. I would add in my colorful spaghetti and then combine everything together as well. We stir everything together. One trick with jollof rice is that immediately you add in your rice or your spaghetti or anything that you would want to add to the jollof rice you'd have to add in extra spices for me i don't like artificial spices so i always use the natural ones this one is nutmeg powder so i'll add in a little and then i have my curry powder too i will add in a little as well when i'm done 
I will stir everything together. But this time, I'm not using the round spatula or the round ladle. I'm using the one like the fork type. If you use the round one, it will make it um, soft. Or oh, as we will say in Chi, Ubam a janana better, a more better, and to know the piano fat. They are no nice, you know. If you don't have the plastic one, you can buy the wooden one and then you use it in your saucepan. But with nonstick, to always use silicone ladles to make your nonstick um, durable or serve its purpose as it's supposed to be. And then at this stage, you taste for salt too. If it's okay, don't add in any salt. But if it's not, you add in a little to your taste. If you're not too sure of how to salt your food, do it little at a time. You stir and then you taste for it. If it's less, you add little in that order. But if you know how to cook or if you know how to salt your food, you just add in the quantity you think it will be okay. For me, I'm using about three quarter tablespoon. So I'll add everything together. And then add just a little bit of water. I'm adding just a little water because all the vegetables I'll be adding later on contains water too. So um, just a little will be okay. I want my jollof rice to um, be one one. <laughs> and then I'll cover it and then allow it to simmer for about 5 to 10 minutes and then come and check up on it at this stage reduce your fire to the minimum because jollof rice um, doesn't need any high heat to cook it you only need just low heat for the rice to simmer till it's cooked I'll come and check on the jollof rice when the water is drained, you stir it and flip it over for the other side to also cook. I will add a teaspoon of my soy sauce or my dark sauce to it and stir everything together. After mixing everything together, I will add in my meat and then stir it. Once I'm done, I would cover the food with my cling, my aluminum foil. it to simmer so it's well cooked on low heat once the rice is almost done i will check on it again and then add in my vegetables So I'll add in the spring beans first and then my carrots because that one takes a longer time to cook. When I'm done, I would mix everything together again. So once I'm done mixing, I would cover it with my aluminum foil. And this time I would allow it to simmer for five minutes before adding all the rest of the vegetables. All right, so finally I would come and check on my food. 
Now it's almost done, so I will turn it and then add the rest of my vegetables. Now we are left with about five minutes to cook, so I'll add the bell peppers, my sweet corn, and then my onions. I don't want to overcook this one to lose its nutrients, so this is the last I add to my food. I'll just tear everything together like this. Alright guys, so now our jollof rice is ready after two hours, so I would um, open it for you all to see and then Alright, so I'll just cook some in a bowl I'm only dressing my food or garnishing my food, whatever it's called um, that is what I'm doing so I just press it like this and then into a plate like this 